excited to represent or present a fantastic panel uh, representing the sustainable business and NGO community here in Chicago and in the Midwest. You know, it's interesting, the last panel mentioned that consumers expect you to, um, you know, as an industry, to have sustainable practices in place, be that suppliers, be that restaurateurs, whatever, and they expect you to do kind of the work for them. And as the manager of Sheds Great Lakes and Sustainability Program, also working on our Ripe Bite Sustainable Seafood Program, I see that all the time. Everyone expects you to do all the legwork, and when you mention the fact that something isn't sustainable, their eyes blow up and they become aghast at the situation that's going on. So a lot of you, if you're representing restaurants, businesses, etc., and you have not already taken that journey into making sustainability a part of your mission and your operation, I, it can be very overwhelming. You know, as a part of the Right Bike program, I work with restaurateurs, chefs, businesses all throughout the, the Chicago region. And a lot of them, when they're new to partnership with us to improve their seafood sustainability, are very overwhelmed by the process. It's hard. They're thinking it's going to be expensive, it's going to be time consuming. I don't have the resources. I'm in my kitchen. I can't, you know, take the time to make this work for me. What can you do? And my answer to you, my dear friends, today is a lot and for not a lot of money. So get excited. This incredible group of people is going to share a little bit of their, their personal stories as well as the tools and resources available to the Chicago culinary community and you know the national culinary community as well um, to be able to improve your sustainable practices, make sustainability a part of your mission, and to make it easy, exciting, and really, really rewarding. So, without further ado from me, I would love to introduce our wonderful group of panelists. And this is the abbreviated version of their really fantastic resumes for the sake of time. So if you'd like to know all the incredible successes accrued by this group of folks, just talk to them because they're awesome. So very first, we have Sarah. Sarah is the Development Associate for the Green Chicago Restaurant Coalition. So Sarah has worked for the Green Chicago Restaurant Coalition now for two, you bet a year? Two years? A year. It's fabulous. So Sarah grew up in the Chicago area and went to school at the University of Illinois, where she studied natural resources and environmental sciences with a minor in environmental economics and law. She's passionate about environmental issues and excited to be working with GCRC on making the food service industry more sustainable. Thank you, Sarah. Next, we have Jessica. Jessica is the sourcing manager for FishChoice.com. FishChoice has a booth, and actually so does the Green Chicago Restaurant Coalition, just inside the doors over there, so look for them after. So Jessica currently serves as the sourcing manager for Fish Choice, an online database of sustainable seafood suppliers and producers. Prior to her entering the seafood industry, she spent a significant period of time traveling, and that grew her love and passion for sustainable seafood. So for Fish Choice, Jessica, um, currently has been working there since 2011 and serves as their sourcing manager, helping both seafood suppliers and buyers vet and source sustainable seafood products, which is a great resource. So next we have Janine Wise. Janine is a member of the board of directors for Slow Food Chicago, where she's treasurer and director of the Snail of Approval program, which you'll hear more about in a little bit. Janine is also a volunteer beekeeper with the Chicago Honey Co-op, Slow Food Delegate to Terra Madre in 2012, and to tie one more industry connection in, a sous chef in Italy in Chicago. She's a wonderful resource. So next down the list, we have Justin, and of course he was on the back of my paper, not the front. Justin is the head chef and owner of Fig Catering. Justin's been cooking since he was 15, including formal training in high school and the Culinary and Hospitality Institute of Chicago. Justin spent nearly five years as a sous chef at the Atwood Cafe in Southwater Kitchen before flipping one of America's best burger joints, according to GQ Magazine, Pope Mahone's, where he met Molly, his future business partner and wife. Don't you love industry connections? I met my husband and working in the industry too, bartender and server. What are you gonna do? Love it. Um, so Justin's food repertoire includes everything from pizza to Mexican to Filipino and Indian to classic French. Thank you, Justin. And last but most certainly not least is Paul. Paul Fairbach is the co-owner and executive chef of Big Jones. Paul was born and raised in Jasper, Indiana, a small town upbringing instilled in him a passion for heritage recipes. Summers were filled with fishing, hunting, foraging, and working alongside his mother in the kitchen really, really resulted in an appreciation for fresh seasonal ingredients and a love for traditional cooking. As the executive chef and co-owner of Big Jones in Chicago, he showcases his homespun style of cooking and commitment to finding and preserving historic foods in the American South. A few accolades for Big Jones, they're absolutely incredible. In 2008, he branched out and opened this restaurant. It was regionally inspired with Cajun fare, Creole, Low Country, and Appalachian influences, and has garnered both local and national acclaim, including Best New Restaurant by Chicago Magazine. And in 2013 and 2014, 
Paul was honored as a semi-finalist for the Jane Beard Foundation's Best Chef of the Great Lakes Award. Could this be a better group of folks for this? I mean, holy cow, it's amazing. So really quickly, as I talked um, a bit earlier, you know, there's a, there's a lot of buzz around sustainability as a part of business practices for culinary for the culinary industry. So what I'm going to do now is turn the microphone over to these folks to give you a brief overview of what they do. Is is for um, you know for Sarah and Jessica and Janine mostly what their organizations represent, what resources they can offer you, and then we'll turn the mics over to Justin and Paul to talk about their experience creating sustainability um, as a part of their business model and also how um, you know that that works in the overall partnership realm with these folks. So, Sarah. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Aislin. Um, so I'm Sarah. I work with the Green Chicago Restaurant Coalition. Um, and the, the Green Chicago Restaurant Coalition is a nonprofit organization dedicated to protecting the environment and conserving natural resources by helping the Chicago Area Food Service um, reduce its collective environmental footprint. So before I go into a little bit about how we do that, I'll give you just a quick history of the organization. Um, GCRC was actually founded in 2007 as a co-op, and it was founded by two um, Chicagoland restaurateurs, Dan Rosenthal and Ina Pinkney. And it was run as a co-op for a few years, and then actually in 2011, the co-op began its transition to become the Great Chicago Restaurant Coalition. And we developed a business model and a membership structure and um, appointed our, our president and CEO, Elise Carla Terrace, who was right over there supporting. Um, and, and put together a board of directors and an advisory board. Um, and so we're a fairly young organization, but we are, are growing and we currently um, work with over 200 uh, restaurant members and 25 supplier members. Um, and the, these are our organizations that have joined GCRC as a member um, and we work directly with them, but we do also offer all of our, our resources to um, food service operators and consumers throughout Chicago. Um, so we don't we don't limit communication to just our members, but those are our people who support our organization. Um, so a little bit about what GCRC does. Uh, we work to educate consumers about environmentally sustainable dining options throughout the Chicagoland area. We provide educational and sustainability resources to food service operators to help them through the process of becoming more sustainable and really where to start and where to look. Um, we work to increase the availability and accessibility of sustainable goods and services. And um, we also work to connect stakeholders through networking events um, and opportunities just to, to get like-minded individuals together and, and share ideas um, to help grow this movement. Um, and a lot of the resources, the educational resources that we offer are um, our website um, and we also offer them in print and our staff is always there as a resource as well. The Guaranteed Green program is actually a consumer education program that was launched in 2009 when GCRC was still a co-op um, and this is a program that's used to let uh, Chicagoland consumers and those who visit the Chicagoland area know about um, food service operations that have reached a, a markedly high level of environmental sustainability. Um, and in order to qualify for the Guaranteed Green Program, food service operators, so that's restaurants, event spaces, caterers, um, they're all able to qualify for this program if they carry an independent third-party certification. So the um, Green Restaurant Association has their own um, certification standard that they have developed. Green Seal actually just recently launched a restaurant certifica certification standard as well. And the Chicago Department of Aviation has developed their own um, sustainable concessions policy and uh, sustainable airports manual that um, concessionaires at O'Hare and, and Midway can, can um, work to meet that standard and they can get a green airplane rating and then, and then um, qualify for our guaranteed green program. And this is just a list of several locations that we work with who are guaranteed green. You'll see Fit Catering is up there. They are a Green Seal certified catering company. Um, just just a, a brief overview of our Guaranteed Green Sustainability Assistance Program. This assistance program offers on-the-ground help to restaurants and catering spaces and event spaces that are looking to improve the sustainability of their operations. So oftentimes when we um, 
work with food service operators who are looking to take advantage of this program. They are looking to get certified through one of those third party um, agencies and we can help them through that certification process because it's a little bit tricky. There's a lot of documentation that needs to happen um, and certain standards they need to hit and we um, set up interns to work with those, those locations who are looking to get certified. But we also offer on the ground assistance for any food service location that's looking to really assess where it is at the moment in terms of sustainability um, and devise a plan for how to improve on what they're doing and implement some, some more green practices into their operation. GCRC works with a lot of wonderful partners. You can see the Shed Aquarium and Fortune Fish are both up on this this list, um, as well as several others, and our full list of um, product and supplier partners is on our website. But these are our organizations that GCRC works with that provide environmentally preferable products and services. So um, we, we work to get this list together and get this information out to restaurateurs and food service operators so they can, it, it's easier to make the more sustainable choice and they don't have to wade through a whole list of, of different companies and try to figure out what's really green and what's not. We, we work to put this list together for you. Um, and finally, events. We love events, we love networking, we love talking to people and sharing educational information and letting people know what it is that we do. So um, these are all things that we've been involved with throughout 2014. Um, and we're all constantly working to put together educational events to share information um, with interested parties, whether they be consumers or restaurateurs. Um, and so we love being events like, involved in events like this and other such things. And um, yeah, this information is also, we, we keep an events list up on our website, so that information is on our website as well. And if you are interested in seeing any of the stuff that I just talked about, you can visit buygreenchicago.org and my contact information is up there as well. So that's, that's GCRC in a nutshell. Thank you so much, Sarah Ness and Jessica for this Testing. All right. We've got it. And the PowerPoint's working. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, uh, as Aislinn said, I'm Jessica Redmayne. I'm the sourcing manager at fishchoice.com. And for just a minute, I want to turn back to 2009, the year Fish Choice was founded. At the time, the sustainable seafood movement was becoming what it is today, and we were seeing more and more buyers committing to sourcing their seafood sustainably. However, there was still a lot of work to be done to help buyers find and source the sustainable seafood. Some of the biggest barriers to sourcing sustainably were gaps between recommendations from environmental groups and the information buyers needed to be able to follow them. This was the reason that FishChoice.com and the Sustainable Seafood Calculator were created. Instead of giving you a list of recommendations, we give you the ability to do two things. First, we'll help you assess your own seafood with the Sustainable Seafood Calculator. Then, we will help you find information and alternative sources of seafood via fishchoice.com. Fishchoice.com can provide you with a list of companies and product specifications that already meet the recommendations of our partners. We do the legwork of crunching a vast amount of environmental recommendations and certifications so that seafood buyers, large and small, have all the information they need when it comes to making informed decisions about purchasing sustainable seafood. As you can see, we partner with many of the leading organizations in our field and pool their ratings and certifications data. This allows us to work with the largest amount of data possible when assessing and finding alternative forms of seafood. Our partners include the Monterey Bay Aquarium, the Safina Center, which was formerly the Blue Ocean Institute, the Aquaculture Stewardship Council, NOAA, it's kind of a long list, OceanWise, Sea Choice, the Global Aquaculture Alliance and their Best Aquaculture Practices Certification, the Marine Stewardship Council, and the Food Alliance. Now, in addition to our partners, we also have a number of sustainable seafood affiliates who are working with many companies in the sector, uh, one of whom is the Shed Aquarium and a gracious organizer of this wonderful panel. Um, now, before I walk through some of the features of fishchoice.com, I just want to uh, talk to you quickly about the Sustainable Seafood Calculator. 
It's our newest tool, and we built it to help seafood buyers develop a starting point for their sustainable seafood programs. As I'm sure many of you are aware, one of the most difficult things about bringing sustainability into your organization is finding a place to start. With the help of the calculator, you can start on a crucial first step in implementing sustainability in your business, assessing your seafood. The calculator will easily let you enter all the seafood you sell, and your dashboard will give you a snapshot of how your sourcing is looking today. You can see an example of a dashboard. I don't know which company this is, so I couldn't tell you that, but uh, right there. Uh, <clears throat> uh, this will let you determine what seafood you are currently selling and where you may need to begin to consider some alternatives. Your calculator or dashboard will show you how much of the seafood you are purchasing is considered sustainable by volume, along with providing alternative products on fishchoice.com. It can also provide you with information on certified products and whether or not there are any fishery improvements available for that species. <clears throat> Once the calculator has helped you determine which products you may want to find more sustainable alternatives for, fishchoice.com can help you directly connect with businesses and information to help make sustainable seafood sourcing your reality. Fish Choice has a variety of information to help answer all of your sustainable seafood questions and connect you with businesses which can provide you with those sustainable products. Now, quick, before my time runs out, I just want to quickly highlight some of the features of fishchoice.com that I think are uh, most useful for buyers. Uh, first, there are species-specific buying guides. Uh, these are great resources. They have a ton of information in them. They feature micro-reports, buying tips, and nutritional information, and also offer an in-depth breakdown of sustainability ratings and issues relevant to that particular species. Um, you can also find links to our sustainable products on fishchoice.com via the buying guide, so you can read a buying guide, say, I want to source that fish, click, you've got a whole list of companies that will give it to you. Um, second, fishchoice.com features a growing directory of over 400 suppliers and their products. We've compiled large amounts of information on our suppliers to help you get to know not only new vendors, but your existing customers, or existing suppliers, excuse me. Our product listings include relevant sustainability information, such as catch methods and origin, along with product availability, sizes, and delivery information to help to determine if that particular product is right for you. Getting started with Fish Choice is very easy. First off, it's free to use. You can simply log on and create an account today, if you're so inclined. Um, <laughs> obviously, the sustainable seafood calculator URL is a little bit unwieldy, so you can access the cal calculator via the homepage at fishchoice.com. Um, so the next time that you're finding yourself feeling overwhelmed by everything that you have to do to address sustainability in your business, remember Fish Choice is here to help. We have all the information you need to assess your current seafood and find alternatives for your unsustainable products. Uh, we really love questions and feedback, so I've included my contact information up there. Please feel free to give me a call or shoot me an email. And that's it. Thank you. Wonderful. And now on to Janine. Hi everyone, thanks for coming out. My name is Janine Wise. I'm on the board of directors of Slow Food Chicago and um, I'm the treasurer and the director of the Snail of Approval Program. Uh, so thank you. Uh, what is Slow Food? Slow Food is a grassroots volunteer nonprofit network with a vision and a mission. Um, and basically it boils down to good, clean, and fair, which I'll go into a little more when we talk about the Snail of Approval Program. Um, well, the definitions, is, as far as we use them, good food should be tasty, seasonable, fresh, and wholesome. Clean, the, the food production and consumption that preserves biodiversity, sustains the environment, and ensures environment, animal welfare without harming human health, and fair, affordable to all, fair conditions, and pay for small-scale producers. Sorry, I'm doing this on my phone and my so I didn't have to turn around. Um, so this began in Bra, Italy, which is outside of Torino, and it's a manifesto. It's basically the opposite of fast food, uh, the opposite of fast life. It's a firm defense of quiet material pleasure 
is the only way to oppose the universal folly of fast life. Our defense should begin at the table, and a lot of that includes um, who you're eating with, sharing food with, knowing who grew your food, and um, enjoying the pleasures of the table. Uh, right now, we have slow food in 150 countries, we have 100,000 members, 1,300 local chapters, and we support 2,000 food communities, as well as in the process of putting 10,000 gardens in Africa. Um, so we are engaged at all levels, international, uh, national and local. Some of the things we do, we're grassroots activists. We do shared meals, farmer relations, advocacy, workshops, crop mobs, fundraising, lectures, community gardens. We have a garden um, through Slow Food Chicago uh, called Preserve with the North Lawndale Graining Committee, Chicago Co Honey Co-op and Neighbor Space. It's at 12th and Central Park. Aislinn has been a great help. Um, she's been in charge of that with Slow Food. And we grow uh, a lot of African heritage crops and you're welcome to come. We do a volunteer day once a month. We have one this Saturday, right? Saturday. Yes. Saturday, if you sign up at slowfoodchicago.org or just show up, bring a bottle of water, um, you get to share in the harvest. It's a really nice thing. Um, and that leads me to the snail of approval, which is something that um, I was very happy to put into place for Chicago. Snail of approval is a recognition program for uh, restaurants, prepared food businesses, vendors, farmers markets, farms that are making a contribution to a food system that's good, clean, and fair. So we're not as stringent as maybe you know the Green Restaurant Association, but we're trying to be as inclusive as possible. Since we are an all-volunteer board, we don't have the time to get into a ton of enforcement. But if people are making the right steps um, towards a food system which is good, clean, and fair, we really want to recognize that. Um, and I want to congratulate Justin and his wife because Fit Catering is a snail approval awardee. And we just started this. Uh, we finally launched it this year. We have five. So Fit Catering is one. If you visit booth 707 upstairs in the cheese and charcuterie area, Lee Green with Scrum Scrumptious Pantry, she's up there as well. Um, and some of the work she's doing that I really love is with the Slow Food Arco Taste products. Um, which I'm also happy to work with at my job at Ely. Um, and then uh, Helen and Michael Cameron, they had to leave unfortunately, but they're the owners of Uncommon Ground. They've won a snail, Butcher and Larder, and uh, a place called Sandwich Man are our five current snail winners. And I've got a full slate of nominees that we have to get through, and hopefully we'll award as many as possible. Um, Big Jones is on the list, and we're looking forward to hopefully including them if they'd like. Um, and that's it. If you'd like to know more about Slow Food Chicago, please go to slowfoodchicago.org and there's two ways to sign up. One is through our volunteer newsletter and you'll get a, a newsletter once a month and it'll let you know about our opportunities. And then our newsletter which tells you what we have going on. Thank you. And what's cool about all those snail awardees, they're also all guaranteed green partners, are they not? Or Reach for the Rest of Coalition members? Most are? Yeah, super cool. So in our last 15 minutes, we're going to change tacks a little bit, and we're going to turn the mics over to our fantastic partners at the end with Justin and Paul. So Justin, take it away. Hello. All right, guys. My name's uh, Justin Hall. I'm the chef and owner of Fig Catering. These guys have talked about me a lot, but basically what I, what I do is I own a full-service catering company, which basically means we do everything from the food to the service, uh, beverages, execution, set up, clean up, everything like that. Uh, uh, also, they mentioned my wife. My wife, Molly Skepper, and I started the business almost 10 years ago uh, with a couple of goals. Number one being that we wanted to start and do catering on a smaller scale. Uh, FIG stands for Four Intimate Gatherings. When we first started, FIG only did two to 80 people. We've increased a little bit to two to 150, but in Chicago, we still argue that that's a small event. Um, and, and we mostly just do weddings that are that size, so it's, uh, we're, we're bringing together people a little bit differently there. Um, and we also, besides doing small events, wanted to keep our food local, sustainable, and organic. And that's basically the way that we still work today. In the summer, in the fall, it's great because I can work local almost completely. Um, probably about 95% of what we do and uh, that comes out of our kitchen is local. And that's working through local farmers, through fruits and vegetables, grains, through meat producers, chicken, 
and, uh, and to tie in with the seafood here, we only offer typically options that are local. So we do a lot of uh, you know white fish and uh, trout and things that are grown locally. And then only if our clients request something like salmon or, or scallops, then we have to go something that's raised more sustainably. Uh, let's see here. What do we got up here? Uh, so. Also, part of what we do is, is uh, we like to make everything in-house. Uh, that also helps keep things uh, simple, less packaging. We make all our breads and crackers and aiolis and pretty much everything that comes out of our kitchen has been homemade by our people uh, in our kitchen. Um, and, and to us, that it, it goes from top to bottom. We also have beverage programs where we make our own vermouths and syrups and stuff like that. So. Uh, and, and basically fostering a sustainable food system, which has been a main part of our goal since day one. Uh, and then real quick, the, the whole reason I, we kind of want to tie everything together here is, is how I got going on this. When we started, it was hard. Uh, nine years ago, we were doing what we could. Uh, the, also, the food system was much different in Chicago nine, ten years ago. But what we started doing is we, uh, we would reach out to like-minded people. Um, and Helen and Michael got mentioned earlier. They're there in the middle, they own Uncommon Ground, one of the resources and people that uh, we met with. Um, and then my, one of my former bosses, Dan Rosenthal, who started the GCRC, which was the Green Chicago Restaurant Coalition, or co op, uh, came together with Ina Pickney. And what they wanted to do was make buying green things affordable by creating the co op and lessening the prices. Um, and, and that group, brought me to a lot of different people, restaurants, farmers, and just a lot of resources to pick their minds where they were getting things. Uh, and then, you know, we then we just, they discovered, well, we have all these biodegradable, uh, compostable disposables, and it's illegal to compost. So then we started pushing for, for composting to become legal in Illinois, and we've done that. So then we have compost makers that get added on, uh, and all these different people that, uh, we get to, to meet uh, and and so the like-minded people are the important part um, GCRC which tied into um, things like Shed Aquarium, Red Bite Program, Slow Food these are all things that were um, just meeting people finding out what they're doing uh, telling them what we're doing and then also one thing that we like to do is make sure that we're talking to people that are interested in it and giving what time we can to help them understand what the resources are and, and things like that for them to get uh, on, on the same level. Um, and also through through um, GCRC, we talked about the, uh, the Green Seal certification that we were awarded and also just recently with the slow food uh, snail of approval, and that was another one that came a little bit organically. One of my farmers is on the board of directors there, and I, I called him and I said, Mr. Montalbano, what do I have to do to be part of this program, which was a fledgling program, and basically he brought us up in a meeting, and it's just another great connection from an awesome, one of the best farmers I've ever worked with, with the best product, to, uh, to getting part to know new people. Uh, See here. Oh, there, there's all those that I was just talking about. Um, anyway, so as a business owner, to me, it's very important, uh, or as a person, it's very important for me to be sustainably functioning, uh, making things that are green, organic. To me, it's curiosity, it's staying uh, ahead of the curve, and it's it, it, it's also it also forces you to do things to what I believe is the right way to be making things from scratch, to be making things that are interesting and thoughtful and creative. Um, as a business owner, it saves me money. Um, if I can, through like the green seal, have lower water flow, lower electricity use in my store. Um, if I'm, instead of hiring a, a grease rec recycler to come take it and throw it, but to recycle my grease another way, if I can give it to one of my farmers that runs biodiesel, I'd rather do that than pay for it. Recycling, composting takes a lot out of my garbage flow and for actually a little bit cheaper per pound and per square space that we're doing it. Um, and so those are all a lot of things that we do that actually save me money. And, and another great thing is, is that I get to teach my employees this 
And for me, it's always been a benefit to have employees that want to know it because they're more engaged. Um, they're more curious, interested in what's going on, and they make a better product at the end of the day than somebody that just wants to work for six to eight hours, or 12 hours, or 20 hours, or however long, however long the day might be, and then just go home and, and forget about it. So we, we like to work with similarly impassioned people. Um, and that's about all I have. I'll pass it off here to Paul. Um, I'm a chef, so I don't really do PowerPoint, I guess. <laughs> but uh, thanks to Aislinn, I sent her some, uh, some photographs, which hopefully you'll enjoy, that may have a little bit to do with what I'm actually talking about. Um, but I'm Paul Farabach. I own, um, I'm a co-owner of an executive chef at Big Jones, which is at 5347 North Clark Street. Um, it's on the north, far north side of Chicago. And it's, it, it's always presented an interesting challenge for us because we're located very far from downtown, so we're sort of outside um, the, the downtown buzz factory. And so we always knew that as a neighborhood restaurant, we would have a different set of challenges than, say, a restaurant that's, that's located downtown um, in River North or in, uh, or in the West Loop. And that value would be uh, value would be a very, very important thing for us in efficiency of service because a lot of the people who would be coming to our restaurant are coming there uh, because we're in the neighborhood and they're coming for that for that kind of experience and it's not a big, a, 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 you know, a big downtown, you know, four hour long fine dining experience where you can take a half an hour between courses and all of this. And, um, and the value thing is, is important because when we opened, before we even opened our restaurant, we placed a very, very high priority on sustainability. Um, and it wasn't because it was something that we wanted to do for, from a marketing perspective, but it was something that we recognized that we have to do. And I talk about sustainability a lot, and I don't tend to, uh, I don't tend to cite statistics a lot. Um, I think that there's a lot of information out there um, at the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Services website with fish populations for any species you can imagine. Um, there's great information on the right on the right bite uh, page, um, and Chefs Collaborative, uh, um, of which I'm on the national board, has a lot of information about things that go beyond seafood. Um, or general agricultural practices, food processing. Um, there's a lot of information out there, and basically it all adds up to we're screwed. Like what we're doing right now, we have to stop. We're digging ourselves in a big hole, and, and we've got to stop. And so I'm going to talk mostly, fo focus mostly on what I, my experience with sustainable seafood in Chicago rather than specifically what we do at Big Jones, uh, you can go to my website, I have a blog that's got probably 400 entries on it at this point if you're really interested in finding out more about what we do there. I'm kind of a crazy guy, so I write a lot. And uh, you can read about it all you want, but um, you know, we do coastal southern food when we, when we first opened, and we've expanded more broadly into regional southern, but when we opened, we focused a lot on the cuisines of, of the Carolina Low Country and South Louisiana. So seafood was obviously going to be a, a big, big thing for us. We were going to have to have crabby, we were going to have to have crawfish, catfish, um, whatever kinds of fin fish, uh, shrimp. Uh, and these were all very problematic species. Um, and in 2008, when we opened, there was nobody in Chicago who could send me any third party certified crab meat. Uh, and there was no one who could send me domestic crawfish tail meat. Even though it was available, there's 150 million pounds or so done in, or produced in Louisiana every year. And yet none of the Chicago fish houses were stocking, or at least I didn't know about it until I met, until I met Fortune. And I think you know, any of you who are in the restaurant business know that you come up through with a certain chef or you come up through a certain company, and there are certain suppliers that you work with and you're comfortable with. And in all the years I've been in Chicago, I've worked with Plitt, which used to be a great, a great seafood house a long time ago. Um, I worked with uh, Isaacson and I worked with, uh, with uh, Supreme Lobster. I'd never worked with Fortune, so I wasn't working with them when, I, when, when we first started. And so I was on the phone with people in Charleston and Savannah and Louisiana trying to get, me who could send, trying to get people to send me crab meat um, and trying to get people to send me uh, crawfish, uh, which they're more than happy to do, but then you start adding shipping costs when I'm trying to buy, you know, a 50 pound or 100 pound case of shrimp, um, try going to, um, and shrimp was actually, believe it or not, quite a fight. 
uh, Fortune stocks a, a lot of sustainable options for shrimp. But uh, before I started working with Fortune, I was having to, I was repeatedly having to send back um, shrimp from another supplier who won't go unnamed. Um, but I would order, you know, I was getting Laughing Bird shrimp at the time, which is uh, an MSC certified and uh, Monterey Bay Aquarium certified, and I believe it's also uh, a right bite green light shrimp, which is uh, farm raised in Belize, but it's a Gulf white shrimp. And there was an outage of it. Um, the guy, there was actually kind of a phenomenal story. The guy who started this really cool aquaculture farm died in a plane accident. And uh, all of a sudden, this shrimp wasn't available for almost a year. So I'm calling and ordering, you know, Gulf of Mexico white shrimp because that's that's my next choice, the American wild caught. And they would send me this this these blue shrimp from Mexico, and I would send them back and say, hey, you know what? I asked for Gulf shrimp. Send me Gulf shrimp. And this is one of the biggest fish houses in the in, in the United States of America. Saying, oh no, we don't have any of that stuff. You can use this Mexican stuff. It's sustainable. And I said, okay, get uh, get MSC or Monterey Bay Aquarium to tell me it's sustainable. You're selling it. You don't get to tell me it's sustainable. Um, wasn't much longer that I was able to find, and I went through this. It was a, a similar fight with crawfish. It was just unbelievable. Um, Chinese crawfish has been found to, to be contaminated with antibiotics uh, and things that are far worse than antibiotics. Um, it's cheaper, um, and a lot of the farm-raised shrimp that you can find is cheaper than uh, the. You know, the, there's a, a great aquaculture farm that does shrimp in New Caledonia also. Uh, but the, uh, the Laughing Bird shrimp and our American Gulf Coast shrimp, our shrimp industry is on the ropes. Um, they're getting $1.50 a pound, and actually last week, they, uh, the Louisiana shrimp industry just shut itself down. They just said, you know what, we're not going out. Basically, basically a strike. They don't have a union or anything like that, but they just said, we're not, we're not going out. Um, and a lot of the, one of the biggest problems that our shrimp industry has is that they don't really have modernized processing and it's hard for you know so you can actually get fish that or you can actually get shrimp that are farm raised um, unsustainably um, in Indonesia or Thailand or China uh, or South America uh, that actually come in and look nicer than the American product does just because of the way they're they're processed because there's been a lot of capital investment in those countries through the World Bank and there's a lot of ge geopolitical stuff I won't go into but our, far, our shrimp industry doesn't have the funds to modernize itself, and when they're getting $1.50 a pound at the dock, it doesn't make any sense for them to make the capital investments that it would be required to come up to the next step. So what are we going to do about it? Um, we're going to buy their products anyway, because they're better, and they're still the only, cert they're still, they're still the only certified wild of shrimp uh, that are sustainable are, come from American waters. We're the only, we have the only shrimp industry that requires turtle excluder devices uh, on the nets. Um, there's a lot of other there's a lot of other uh, things that go into, into the fishing practices besides just the turtles. Um, the way that they're harvested can affect mangroves uh, and a lot of other things. Um, crawfish farms uh, in Louisiana are a model of sustainability. Um, it's it's actually kind of phenomenal. There's a big there's a big rice industry there, and uh, they will actually grow rice in the summertime, harvest it in the fall, you have all this chaff that's left, and, and then the crawfish come in over the, over the course of winter and into the spring, and they eat all of the chaff, and then you have all of these crawfish, and that's why crawfish season is actually in the spring. Um, after a cold winter, their meat tends to be sweeter and more delicious as it is, but uh, there's a lot of really cool stuff going on, and I, I guess those are two of the things I'd like to geek out about. Um, and only by American crab meat also, I'll say that. <laughs> That's awesome. So I know that we're kind of running close on time here, so what I wanted to just say is, first of all, thank you all so much for sharing your great work. It's really clear to me, as a member of, of the NGO community here, that there are so many incredible resources out there to not only help businesses to improve their sustainability and to you know be able to do that easily and for free um, in a lot of different ways, but there's also this great group of folks that really were trailblazers, you know, eight, nine, ten years ago, that have force the industry and the NGO community to address their needs, which is make it easier, make it more available, and amazing folks like Fortune have allowed that supply chain to become much more transparent and much clearer and much easier to use. So the key message to me, as voiced by both of you gentlemen, is not only is it 
easy and important um, to, to you know, make sustainability part of your business model, but you can see the benefits in terms of dividends, but also customer loyalty and personal fulfillment, and in Justin's case, also engagement with staff even. It's just a really important part. And there's this great community of resources available to help you do it quickly, in most cases, and for not a lot of investment on your part. So um, in, in the sake of time, I'm going to unfortunately close the panel at this point, but if you have any questions for any of these remarkable people up here, they're all incredible resources. We would love to, as an Indian community, as a culinary community in Chicago, see as much sustainability, as many sustainable seafood options, and, and a vibrant community that supports one another in every way we can. So we're here for that, and we're very excited. Is there anything any one of you wanted to add before we quickly close. I know we had to wrap it up really quickly. I know, it's so crazy. Thank you all so, so, so much. Check them all out on the web and at their booths, and uh, thank you so much. So